What's going on guys, this is Miasin and as promised, I'm going to show you guys the top 15 best super poly targets for this format. And honestly, even if you're not watching this during the July 1st, 2021 ban list format, well don't worry because this video is probably still going to be relevant for you as the majority of the super poly targets are always good regardless of which format we're sitting on. So before you start, really a reminder to like and subscribe. Let's try to aim 1000 likes man, it would really help a lot, it would motivate me so much to keep making it like these. Alright, so the first three Super Poly targets are actually really similar in what they do and which kind of cards they are as well. Pretty much the same archetype. These are the Predaplanned Fusion Monsters. So Predaplanned Trifu Verdum, Predaplanned Dragostapelia, and also Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Not the Pendulum Starving Venom because obviously that card is banned. These three cards are really good because they can fuse with dark monsters on the field. Trifu Verdum is three dark monsters, so maybe it might be too much. Starving Venom is just two dark monsters, and Dragostapelia. Pelia is a fusion and a dark monster. So this used to be really good against pendulums in case they ended their turn with or Arai's Vertex Dragon and maybe Jackal King or Endymion as you can fuse both of them in order to make Dragostapelia, negate another card and then jump over something and that's it. With just Super Poly you can break a full board. Trifu Verdom on the other hand has a really neat effect where it kind of resembles a bit like Evil Zor, Lagia, Solo Morning, etc. where you can negate inherent summons from the extra deck. From the extra deck only but still really really nice and also if there's like a predator counter whatever on the field you can revive it back from the graveyard but unless you're actually playing Drago Stapelli as well this effect will rarely come up and then for starving venom it also has a really neat effect where it can gain a lot of attack when it's fusion summoned and when it is destroyed it has a regeki-esque effect where you destroy every monster upon controls so these three super poly targets as you probably already guessed it are good against every single decks that can abuse dark monsters maybe dragon link for example and there's also another really neat target for dragon link that I'm going to be talking about a bit later on but yeah that's pretty much it for the dark monsters you can probably just imagine how good dark monsters are anyways in the game so these three super poly targets will probably always see play moving on we have probably the second I want to say most generic super poly target in the game if not the most generic depending on the situation and that is mud dragon of the swamp not the muddy mud dragon the level 6 synchro mud dragon of the swamp level 4 fusion monster also has an actual relevant effect when you you summon it on the field but how are you really summoning this with super poly it's just two monsters that have the exact same attribute but different types from each other for example if you're playing against char brigade and your opponent ends on appaloosa and the link to ancient warrior the double dragon ancient lord or something you can actually fuse both of them since appaloosa is fairy and the dragon lords is a beast warrior so since there are different types but they are still both wind attribute monsters super poly is going to essentially allow you to break four interruptions and then when you summon that mud dragon of the swamp one really cool thing is that you can use this effect to change the attribute of every monster on your field and then your opponent cannot target monsters with the same attribute as Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Alright, the next one on the list is... <laughs> the name is just gonna be really hard for me to pronounce, but it's Cordius the Trephasic Dealman. It's a fusion monster level 9 with, a, again, another really relevant effect. And how are you summoning it? You need one Synchro monster, one Xyz monster, and one Link monster. Now, I don't know if you played the game back when Adam Emancipator was at full power, but the deck consistently ended its turn with Appaloosa, Dragite or Savage, or maybe sometimes even both, uh, IP, IP Masquerina probably, and Abyss Dweller with Block Dragon. Now, the majority of these cards you wouldn't be able to kind of do anything about, uh, anything about, but for example, when you have a card like Super Poly, you can actually use it on draw phase before your opponent has the chance to even detach with Abyss Dweller to use this effect. So you're not really chaining the card to Dweller, you're using your turn player priority to use it and shotgun it as soon as you possibly can, and since neither player can actually respond to Super Poly, your opponent will not be able to just chain the Dweller to it. So if you're playing against Adam Emancipator and he actually ends his turn with Dweller, Appaloosa, with Dragon, or Savage, well, <laughs> Merry Christmas because with just one Super Poly, you're breaking three negates. Not to mention that the card can actually recycle back Super Poly from the graveyard to the hand by paying 2,000 life points. It also has another neat effect where you can destroy multiple cards your opponent controls. So it is safe to say that if you can successfully summon this with Super Poly, there is just no way you're really losing the game. It really is that good. And also, I want to say something that Super Poly allows you to fuse from either board. So if your opponent, let's say, only has Xyz plus Synchro, all you have to do is just link summon anything. It can be a link one monster, and then that's it you have link synchro and Xyz on the field it doesn't have to be on your opponent's field necessarily so then you can super poly destroy every card your opponent controls recycle back super poly and since it is a dark obviously we already learned that you can make trifu verdum starving venom dragostapelia so your opponent is going to eat even more interruptions 
Next up on the list is actually a pretty funny one. It's the best card of 2017. That should be enough said, but it is C Monster of Theseus. It's just two tuner monsters. That's it, that's all. Nothing much to explain here. If a deck ever plays multiple tuners on the field and you really don't want to let them stay on the field for too long, maybe Adam Encipator, for example, when they have Adam, uh, Adam Encipator, Seeker, Research, or whatever, maybe you're gonna super bully there and you're not, your opponent is not going to be able to use their effects really well. I had one card that people even forget is even a super poly target because the majority of the time when it is played in the extra deck, it is most often an instant fusion target, but I don't think people really take a look at the requirements to even summon the monster, and that is Panzer Dragon. In order to summon this, you need one machine and one dragon. That's pretty generic, so let's say if you're playing Cyber Dragons and you have a machine on the field, you can super poly by using your own machine and then one powerful dragon your opponent controls, even if he doesn't necessarily have two dragons or two darks for the starting Venom. And then after that, since it is a level 5 light machine monster, you can easily make Cyber Dragon Nova and keep playing from there. So even though it is not necessarily the monster that's going to take away the majority of the your opponent's cards, maybe the fact that it's a level 5 machine might seriously help you with Cyber Dragon. So when you play Panzer Dragon alongside Instant Fusion, just don't remember don't don't forget that on top of being an instant fusion target, it's also a great target for Super Poly. Okay, now a pretty obvious one that I don't think people even uh, are going to doubt this one. It's the Prank Kids Weather Washer. People have been playing this as a Super Poly target since 2018. It basically only needs two Prank Kid monsters, and in case you were wondering, well, you can either play this or the Rocket. The reason why the Weather Wash is actually better is because it's kind of like an Armades Keeper of Boundaries, if I recall correctly, that's the name of the card, when it attacks. Well, I mean, whenever a Pranked Monster attacks. So at least, unlike the Rocket, it actually does have an effect. Unless you are playing a Pranked's Mirror Match, in which case, yeah, it would be a bit better to play the Rocket, maybe, because it has a more relevant effect. Unless you're playing on your opponent's turn, then you can tribute it and then revive back two Pranked Monsters, but you get the point. Okay, Salamangrate, the kind gained a lot in popularity, now it is the best Cybers deck in the game, and Cybers are decks that actually kind of lose to Super Poly as well. There are three targets, there are Salamangrid Violet Chimera, there is the Earth Golem Adagnister, and my personal favorite, I want to say probably the most generic one, is the Plexer Chimera. All you need is just two Cybers monsters, that's it, that's all. So your opponent doesn't need to necessarily have a Link monster and a Salamangrid monster on the field if you want to maybe use the Violet Chimera, you can actually just use the Deplexer Chimera for the Super Poly by using two Salamangrid monsters that aren't even Link monsters. So Deplexer Chimera is pretty interesting there, it's also a level 5 light monster, so again, if you're playing Cyber Dragons, you can make play these. You can't make Infinity with it because it's not a machine, well, Nova, but you get the point. And yeah, still a great card though. Okay, next up is going to be pretty interesting. Now there are, two, there, there are actually two Super Poly targets for these kind of decks in general, but one of them might actually be a bit more applicable. The first one is Edlich the Mad Golden Lord. Now, there is another Super Poly target that is Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon that only requires two zombie monsters, and it is infinitely more just generic than the card that I just said, so Elledge the Mad Golden Lord, because even if your opponent doesn't play a single zombie monster, you might be able to play Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon. So, one of the best decks to actually abuse Zombie World is actually Virtual World, because it doesn't lose at all to the type kind of change with Zombie World, and it can easily activate the card on the opponent's turn by sending Banshee with Beatrice. Then after that, you can activate it and every monster becomes zombie. If you're playing against Dragon Link or Salamangrate, well, Merry Christmas, you already win the game. However, if your opponent has Super Poly with Dragon Necro Nether Soul, well, your cards are actually kind of in danger because they all become zombie. So every single monster on the field is a Super Poly target, and that's something that you have to keep into consideration. Now, if you are yourself playing Zombie World, Super Poly is going to be in this like an absolute necessity three of in your deck with Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon because literally every single deck that you're playing against will always lose to the, the to the card. Okay, yeah, now we're moving on into slightly less generic cards, but definitely more powerful cards if you can successfully summon them. The first one is Invoked Elysium. In order to summon this, you need an Invoked Monster and one Monster Special Summon from the extra deck. So, for example, if your opponent has Double Merkaba, you can Super Poly into Elysium, banish every single card in your opponent's field, and I think also Graveyard or something? That's, uh... No, it's only banish all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute as the monster that you can banish the Invoked 
cloaked monster that you can banish. Kind of uh, disgusting, I want to say. <laughs> so yeah, if you're playing this in, uh, I don't know, maybe an invoked mirror, or if you're not even playing invoked cards yourself, and you have Super Poly, and you have the space to play Elysium, well, definitely destroy Shadal Invoked with this card because it's actually nasty. You can even fuse Winda with their own Merkaba, which is a pretty kind of, I want to say, almost popular turn one board. But yeah, again, don't forget about that. El Shadal Winda, that's also a super poly target, by the way. <laughs> you can use Winda and just any other dark monster on the field to make your own Winda, and now your opponent is under a pretty dangerous floodgate. Okay, this, this one is five head. Literally five head insane super poly target, and it is a literally five headed dragon. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not just five head, it is a monster that requires five dragon monsters on the field. So, it's pretty nasty against Dragon Link if they overcommit, but at the same time, they really do have to summon way too many monsters. I feel like against anyone who kind of has a brain post game one or game two, even if you show them, af well, after you show them the super poly for the five headed dragon, they're going to start playing around the card so this one's definitely not as worth it to play but if your extra deck is just a bunch of memes and cards that you'll probably never summon well yeah might as well just play the five-headed dragon because who knows if it does come up you instantly win the game to be honest the last one on my list is world legacy guard dragon no sorry world chalice guard dragon all madork basically all you need for it is three link monsters and that's it it has a really nasty effect where it's kind of like ultimate conductor tyranno it can attack every single monster your opponent controls if I recall correctly, it doesn't have the Book of Eclipse effect, but still. And yeah, it's just a really nice card. A lot of people might be thinking that the weird Trishula fusion can be a super poly target by using three monsters with different names, but no. <laughs> the game would be very unfair if there was a generic super poly target that just required three monsters with different names. So yeah, definitely not a considering that card whatsoever. But that's pretty much it for this, I guess, top 15 best super poly targets out there. Really hope you guys actually were able to learn a thing or two and enjoy. And if you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up and subscribe button. That would really help me out a lot. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.